All right, Warriors, good morning. It's Tuesday, and we are live in the quarantine once again. It's Coach Josh here, and uh, we've got a great strength workout for you today. So we're going to be doing uh, a lot of medium and heavy or medium and light dumbbell work. So we're going to do, it's going to be arms galore. So I hope you're ready for it. And it's breathing month and hydration month at Training for Warriors. So make sure that you're, you're, you're breathing. I posted about the benefits of breathing. I'm going to post about the benefits of hydration here and some recommendations that might be worth considering. But oxygen and water, got to have both. So we're focusing on the fundamentals here as we wrap up this uh, quarantine and get back to uh, life outside of the vault, uh, so to speak. And uh, my story for today is, um, is, is one about perspective. And I don't know if you've ever had the experience, maybe I have this experience frequently, but, but maybe you don't. But uh, if you've ever like looked all over the, all over the house for your keys, or looked around for your sunglasses, and you look in your closet, you look in your drawers, you look on the, the, the countertop, you look in the key spot, and you're, uh, you're, you're, you're frantically looking around, and the whole time, the, you got the sunglasses on, or you have the keys in your pocket, and you're, you, know, you, you didn't slow down enough to sort of check and see um, you know, if you actually had the thing that you were looking for the whole time. Well, that, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that happens to me more than I'd like to, uh, I'd like to admit. Um, but the, the first time this happened to me, this is, this is something that sort of started for me in junior high. And um, I would do my homework, and then I would, um, uh, like in math class specifically, this is what I remember, and I would go and I would try to um, submit my homework, and I wouldn't be able to find my, my sheets with all my equations on them and, and, and things of that nature. And I would dig through my backpack, and I would look at my binder, and I'd look at my desk, and i look at my locker, and I couldn't find my homework, and I would end up um, getting a zero. And I would get home from school, and I would... Uh, I would look in my backpack as I would pull everything out in there, like wadded up in the bottom would of course be that worksheet that I was looking for. And I, I, I tell you that story because it, it started this trend and actually it was this very subtle, um, it was the, the early stages of fear of success. Like I had a hard time um, putting myself out there and getting graded or, or letting, people, um, letting people see me. And that habit I started when I was in like the seventh grade that sort of iterated out to uh, versions of it to this day where I have, when I'm working on something, whether it's a program or an offer or uh, a blog or something at Training for Warriors, I keep delaying the, the part where I let people see it. And then I, I put, you know, delaying pushing it out. And uh, I, I bring this story up about um, looking for things that you already have um, because it's, uh, it's, it's part of this theme of, if you've ever read any spiritual books or, or anything about mindfulness, it's basically like you have everything you need. You're equipped already to, um, to, to, to be solid, to be the person you want to be. You have all the resources, the determination, the, the focus, the courage, the passion, the compass. You know what's important. You know what your values are. We often just, we're in such a hurry to find uh, that thing that we're looking for that we forget to look right here, right inside of us. And uh, that lesson that, that was literal when I was in the seventh grade is I, I had this, the, everything that I needed in my backpack on my person. And I, I got in the habit of um, looking outside and looking further away from myself to find it. But um, even today, that lesson strikes home with me. And, and I, I want to remind you that you have everything you need. You have uh, all the assets and resources and all the most important things in life you have access to right now. They're just, they're just inside the, like the diamonds we we're talking about yesterday. And we're going we're gonna to continue to pull up, the, pull up the diamonds and polish them and find them. So in addition to everything you need inside of you, uh, you also need some gains. So hopefully you've got some dumbbells, uh, you got some access to some stuff around you. So we're going to get warmed up and we are going to have a fun strength workout today. Ba -ba -ba. For the, our warm up, you won't need anything. You won't need any tools. Might need some music. So we're going to start with a couple of variations on the inchworm. We'll start with the standard inchworm. I like this one. It's a great way to warm up. I'm going to 
bend over, come all the way out, and then I'm gonna come back in, leading with my hips, touch my shoes, come all the way out. And I'm gonna do five traditional inchworms. All the way out. So we're just doing this to stretch the hamstrings, warm up the arms, the hands. Got some nice grass in your backyard, that'll be easy for you. Now, if you wanna make it, we're gonna do another five, and then I'll let you challenge yourself if you wanna try it in a new way. So, you could do it with one foot. So I could, I'm gonna lift one foot, I'm gonna come down, plant my hands, crawl out, crawl back in. So, you could do it with one foot stabilizing. This is more difficult, more challenging as you can imagine. So alternate feet with that. Coming back out. Notice I'm kind of squatting down to the ground and then crawling out. Nice and low. So a total of 10 inchworms. That one-footed variation is kind of fun, isn't it? After that, we're gonna warm up a little bit more. We're gonna hit that groin. We're gonna do some lateral lunges with touchdown. So I'm gonna step out, touch the ground, and then stand all the way back up. Step out, touch the ground, stand all the way back up. Keeping that chest up. I'm doing this to open up the groin, use the hamstring. We're gonna do five on each side for a total of 10. Three, nice. Now I can see that got some tightness in the groins there of our warriors. That's okay. That's why we're doing this. Whew. Now make sure you don't take too large a step so you don't lose control over this. Bam. Awesome. Now that we've got some blood pumping, we're gonna do some stretches on the floor to open up those quads. So we're here, I'm lying on the, on the ground. I'm, gonna, I'm on my left elbow. I'm gonna grab my left ankle with my right hand and I'm going to get in that quad stretch. Whew. Trying to touch my hip to the ground. Oh, yes. So good. I'm just gonna breathe here. Take a few more breaths. And I'm gonna switch sides. We're just loosening up those quads a little bit before we use them today. I'm trying to touch my right hip to the ground now on the other side. If you're very flexible, that's awesome. You can prop yourself up higher, extending that hip and the quad, there, the hip at the, whew. At the same time you're bending that knee. One more breath, letting go. When I'm on the ground, I'm gonna open up my chest by reaching out with my left hand, gripping the floor, kicking over, and then breathing here on the floor. I'm going to cross my uh, outside foot. In this case, if I'm stretching my left arm, I'm gonna take my right leg over the top, pull that knee out, really extend that hip as I stretch my bicep and my chest. A few breaths here. I'm gonna go over to the other side. Right arm out, left foot across. Well, I think me and Sarah are on the same program because we're both getting more flexible because of all this stretching that we're doing every day. All this body weight stuff. Might be something to it, I don't know. Breathing. All right, now we're loosened up. Got everything 
warmed up and stretched, we're going to start our pole complex and our kickstand Romanian deadlifts. This is going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to really roast the arms and the legs together. The three exercises we're doing in our pole complex today, so we've got three upper body exercises that we're going to do sequentially with no rest. And then we're going to go right into our lower body exercise. And then we're going to take about a minute rest in between. So we've got a lot of sets all in a row. And then we're going to get a, a brief rest. So the exercises that we're going to do are the bent row, the upright row, and the curl. So the bent row, I'm going to hinge over, reach my butt back, let my chest drop forward, and then I'm going to, with palms facing in, I'm going to pull up my heavy pants, pulling those shoulder blades together at the top, letting them separate on the way down. So give yourself about eight warm-up reps here. Yes. Then we're going to go into the upright row. So I'm standing tall. And I'm going to lead with the elbows, pulling the dumbbells into the chest, squeezing my glutes, staying tall. Get eight reps here. And then we're going to do eight reps of the dumbbell curl with my glutes on. I'm trying not to rock and sway. I'm going to go up fast. Two seconds down, one second up, two seconds down. So I'm controlling the tempo. Fast up, slow down, making it look sharp. So we do eight reps here. <laughs> yes, okay. So when it comes to those weights, I pick weights that were kind of challenging. If you have lighter weights, you can do more. You can do 12, 15. So challenge yourself with the weights that you have available. So you're going to do the, the row, the curl, or the row, the upright row, and the curl all in a row. Then we're going to do an RDL kickstand. So a Romanian deadlift is simply a hinge. So here's a normal hinge. Well, a Romanian deadlift single leg is just a hinge with one foot up off the ground. So I'm going to hinge out and then stand up. Whoops, fell down. What we're going to do is we're going to have a kickstand. So I'm going to let my left leg keep the toe down just on the same line as my heel of that shoe. I'm going to reach my butt back. I'm stretching this hamstring and then I'm powering forward with my glute. So I'm really getting that single leg stability, driving that butt forward, making it feel awesome. Totally getting that hamstring activated, feeling in my core. I'm going to do eight reps on one side, and then I'm going to do eight reps on the other. So right now, I'm not using weight. As you can see, I could hold a weight here once I get going on this. It's really easy as you tip your chest forward and your butt back, it's really easy to be lopsided or put all your weight in your heel, but that's not what we want. We want to use the whole foot the whole time so we can be more stable and use more muscles. Eight reps there. So we're going to do four sets of the pull complex, four sets of the the single leg Romanian deadlift with kickstand. And then you rest about a minute in between. As long as you feel strong, you can go ahead and go into the next set. So if you need help on your form, let me see some single leg with the kickstand, Brenda. So you're going to be one foot up off the ground. Yep. And your butt's going to come back, right? You're going to feel that stretch in the hamstring then drive your butt forward. That's it. Now I'm just going to let my toe touch the ground so I don't fall over. And I'm just going to do that. Yeah. Just using that one leg. Yep. 
That's, what the, that's, the, that's the axis. Now, if you want to use your weight, you just grab your weight on top of that, too. So, if you've got a light weight, you can do more reps, but I'm going to stick with eight as I go through my pull complex. One, two, pulling the elbow towards the hip bone, four, five, six, seven, eight, standing up, glutes on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ha <laughs> ha, and then going into the curls, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ha. Then I'm going to go from that right into my single leg RDL. So this is technical. I want you guys to turn on your, your video so I can see you do it. So I don't want anybody flailing. Remember, this is training for warriors. Every rep is a masterpiece. Show it off. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice Reba showing off that hinge. Very good. Okay, one round down. So if your weights are light, go ahead and do sets of 10 or 12. Brenda, add more reps. So I want you to do sets of 12. Those weights are very light, okay? So you're big and strong, so I want you to, yeah, I want you to do more reps. <clears throat> All right, so if you got those light dumbbells, you're gonna do uh, sets of 12. Coming back to the training, yes. Great bent position, Reba. Chest down, Bretta. Pressure in the ball, the big toe. One, two, three, four, five, six. Heavy pants, seven, eight. Yes, upright row, one. Elbows lead, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ha ha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Actually, there was only seven. Wow. Fun stuff. Good. So, you did your pull complex. Now, you're going to do your single leg Romanian deadlift. Hold on to your weights. One foot. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. One of the things that you can do to improve your single leg drill is bend that knee a little bit more and sink into your hinge. What I mean by that is a lot of times we're here. I caught myself doing this, so this is how I know we all do it, is we're stiff on that knee to keep the hamstring tension. So I'm bending over, but I'm not bending this knee very much. So instead, I want to bend that knee and sit into this kind of almost quarter squat position and then drive my hip forward. That's going to get not only more hamstring recruitment, but more glute recruitment too. So bend that knee, sit into that hinge position and see what it can do for you. All right, I'm gonna get some water and then round three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up tall, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes. And then we're doing that curl with that eccentric. One, two, glutes on. Three, four, Five, six, seven, and eight. Ha ha. Man, that feels good. I'm going to keep that going. Single leg Romanian deadlift. Bending the elbow. Sorry, bending the knee. The elbow of the leg. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Whew. Yes. All right. So part of good strength training is repetition, right? Not just having a good rep, but doing many good reps over and over again in a row to develop that muscle, to develop that motor pattern, to make your brain and your body stronger. So as you can see, we're getting the value of the reps in right now. So as you continue for this last set, remember the brain remembers the most stressful repetition. Focus on every move, make it your best. Last set. That's, it. That's right. Getting back after it. Eight reps, going into the upright row. One, two, three. Pulling those dumbbells into you. Five, six, seven, eight. Back to the curl. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Ha! 
All right, remaining deadlifts. Got to get my reps in. Forgot about those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch it sides. Yes. Every rep is a masterpiece. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ha! Okay. Now, shaking off those last few reps. We're coming into the squat hold to overhead press and the eccentric push-up. So for the squat hold, you're going to do a squat. You're gonna press overhead with your weights from that squat position. So I'm down here, back is flat, reaching up overhead, light weights. Practice a few reps without weight so you can get this ready for your next round. Deeper squat, Brenda. Drop the bricks and drop the butt. Get low, lower, lower. Yes, depth before dishonor. There you go. Okay, now that you know what you're doing there, we're going into the eccentric push-up. So, we're gonna do push-ups from the floor and we're gonna do eccentric reps, meaning I'm gonna lower myself to the floor, 1,000, 2,000, three, come back up. If you need to use your knees to get back up, you can. So it'll be like this, 1,000, 2,000, three, come back up, 1,000, 2,000, three, come back up. So I'm gonna do, up to eight reps of eccentric push-ups. So it's all about that slow motion training. Let me see it, let me see your practice. Good, so slower on the way down, Brenda. So you wanna go three seconds down, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 down. So you wanna go slow down and fast up. Yeah, there we go. That's right. Okay, so your squat hold to overhead press, 10 reps, eight reps on the eccentric push-up. Got some light weights. Go ahead, three sets, and you're gonna go through at your own pace. So when you feel ready, you're gonna go in and get your next set. I'm gonna give myself some rest in between, but you can follow along with me, dropping the hips down. Overhead press, doing 10, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then from there, going right into the eccentric. No, thanks for asking. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Up, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 6, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 7, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 8, ha! So, That's one round, got two more rounds. It's not about getting through the, the training. It's about getting what you're getting from the training. I know I say that all the time, but the context of this training, when you're sinking down to the floor, don't just think about like counting. Think about squeezing your chest, pulling yourself to the floor with your arms and your shoulders. 
Let the muscles do the work and be in your, in your body as you descend for that three seconds. All right, squat to overhead press. Time to shine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. Now, some folks are talking to me about wrist issues. So if you have wrist issues, like your wrists are getting worn out from all this groundwork we're doing, that makes sense to me. We gotta keep working on our shoulder stability and mobility, but what you do is you could make a fist, get half neutral with your thumb pointing it in at a 45 degree angle, and then do your push-ups that way. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, up, 2,000, 3,000, up, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, up, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, four, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, five, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, six, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, seven, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, eight. So I was in a unit with a, a gentleman by the name of Larry Craven, and he had permanent wrist damage. So even when we would be in parking lots and we'd be doing push-ups as a unit, he only ever used his fist. So his knuckles were pretty savagely tough because he was doing push-ups on asphalt with his fist for years. Now we don't have to, we don't have to be like that because our fitness isn't graded by how many push-ups we can do in life. And uh, for, for Larry, it was important that he was always able to do a lot of push-ups. But what we are doing is, Brenda, let me see your, your squat to overhead press. If you have extra energy, let's work on the squat. Good, get the butt lower. Hold your hands over your head and just keep them there. And then see how low you can get your butt. Yes, stop there. That's the press, that's the point where you're pressing from. We got all this energy because you've been doing half squats. We're doing full squats now, okay, Brenda? We got it. Didn't mean to call you out like that, I love you, I love you. I just want you to use that energy for productive training. Deeper, yes, yes. The pain of growth versus the pain of standing still. Last set. Last set. One. Eight, nine, ten. Push-ups, eccentrics, get them done. 2,000, 3,000, up, 1,000, 2,000, 2, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 3, 1,000, 3, 4, 1,000, 2,000, 5, 2,000, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Whew. We got to get cooking. We got a lot of work left to do. I've been talking too much. Okay. 45 degree angle lunges and side plank dips. So for the 45 degree angle lunge, I'm here. I'm going to take a step, not backwards, but out to a 45. My hips are going to face the same direction. So 
I've, it's an awkward angle. I'm really activating the groin on the inside of the lead leg, still leaning forward, still doing that good lunge. So I'm gonna do eight on that side, square up, eight on the other side. So it's eight reps per lunge. Again, my hips, they'll wanna point straight ahead, but keep them, keep them pointed where the lead toe is. So it's really gonna be a matter of that back hip, not pointing forward, but it's gonna feel like it's pointing out in order to get that groin angle. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the side plank dip. We're gonna be on the ground. I'm gonna be facing forward. Feet stacked. I'm gonna lift and then tap. Lift, tap. My head stays back. Four, five. I like to keep my arm up, six, as a reference point. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That way you can feel if your arm is dipping forward. If you're dipping forward, you're leaning forward, your head's probably moving forward. Lots of things are probably happening. So we're on the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. All right, that was round one of our circuit. Now we're going to get some weights, get them involved. So I've got some medium weights. Again, all the reps are going to be on one leg. So I'm going to do 45 degree angle out, right leg forward, keeping that hip pointed straight ahead. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Oops, eight's all we're doing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Staying busy. Back to the floor. I like to start with my left side because it's more challenging for me. Creating that fist, stacking the feet, straight up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ha ha. Something about moving in the lateral plane. So interesting. Always seems to be such a challenge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. All right. That was round two. Grab some water. We'll finish up round three. Then we're gonna do some arms and ab finisher. It'll be really good. All right. Remember, as you're going through your circuit, halusa, right? I got this. Halusa. In finish. It means I got this. Sisu. Endurance, undeniable. I'll never quit. Keep going. Last set. set. One, two, three, four, five. This takes a lot of concentration. Six, 
seven, eight. Hey, kitty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew. So good. Fist is strong on the ground. Creating that stable position. Make it a fist. Stacking the feet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep that head back, Josh. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side, feet stacked, head back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. All right, we got enough time to get our dessert and our final circuit in. So, skull crusher from the hollow hold. I've got a dumbbell. I'm gonna lie down. I'm gonna create this flat position in my low back. So pushing my low back into the floor. That's about all I can do. You're gonna move your feet as far out as you could tolerate and keep that low back flat. You're gonna hold it there for your ab training while you do 10 skull crushers, keeping the elbows pointed straight at the ceiling. Two, low back flat. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. You always have something to focus on. You can always focus on your arms, focus on your belly, making sure that back is flat, and making sure you're breathing. Now I'm in the triangle position, so I'm on the ground. My right ankle is over my left knee. I'm gonna do a simple crunch, but when I do this crunch and get my shoulders up off the ground, I'm gonna take my, whole, my legs, pull them up to me, I'm bringing that triangle up to the crunch for a triangle crunch. Three, four. We're gonna do 10 per side. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. On the other side, one, two, Three, four, five. Again, ankle on the knee. It's okay if one side's harder. Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So you might be feeling this in your abs. That's okay. Might be feeling it in your hips. That's great. I'm gonna go back to the hollow hold for your second set. So low back is flat on the ground. Your belly's pushing out. It's like we're doing a dead bug, but we're not moving. So got that tension. Now I'm gonna do my skull crusher. Elbows pointed up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep that low back flat. Keep those feet out away from you, Brenda. Further away. There you go, for, there you go. Nine, 10. Back to the crunch. Ankle on the knee. One, two, three, four. Shoulders off the ground. Five, six, seven. Brenda, you gotta move those legs down and up. 
all the way down. They're gonna be flat, then all the way back up. Yeah. Nine, 10, good. Nice work. Reba, get those shoulders off the ground all the way. Even if the shoulder blades are just getting up, barely up, just the weight off of them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ha, 10. Back to the drawing board. Last set. So good. Creating that hollow hold. Low back's flat on the ground. Elbows pointed to the ceiling. Whew, can barely hold on to that. Be safe, warriors. Four, low back's flat on the ground. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So from there, back to that triangle crunch. Ankle on the knee. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, halusa. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. As, as our dessert for our cool down, we're gonna do some really good stuff. We're gonna go ahead and do our, our Cossack lunges to stretch the hamstrings, cool us down a little bit. So we're gonna go alternating from side to side, step out, come back, stand back, out, back, Chest stays up, hips drop down. 10 per side. Two. Three. Good. Four. Five. Good, six, seven, eight, nine, ha, 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 ha. From there, I'm gonna do some uh, archers. So we're gonna do 10 per side. We're gonna do them from the plank position. So I'm here, high plank, feet apart. One, one, two, two. I can already feel this in my abs, that's great. Three, three, four, four, five, Five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, 
10. Yes, so good. All right. So from there, we're on the ground for our four point hamstring mobility. So remember this one, guys. You're here, you're touching the inside of your foot 10 times per side. Try not to move your hips or your shoulders. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, knees close to the ground, hands close to the knees. Woo -woo -woo. So impressive how a few reps can be so challenging. Back to the beginning. Whew. These uh, body weight workouts, they always kill me. But I was, as, as I was talking about earlier, like the, the mobility that I've gotten from it and the stability and the flexibility has really been impressive to me. And it's funny because I could have been doing this stuff at any time, right? I have a body, I have a couch. I have everything I need to uh, take action. And it's like, I was always waiting, I don't know, I guess for some sort of a sea change. Well, lucky for me, I, that happened. So now it's time for me to double down. But the point is, you have everything you need. And this uh, experience, just in the last hour of using your body to get stronger, using what you have available and doing the work, and letting it, the fruits bear through, you could feel the changes already in your heart, in your brain, and continue to dig, dig in your soul for the diamonds in your backpack for your homework so you can continue to bring forth the warrior within. How, how is that working out in your backyard, Brenda? It's beautiful and it smells so good. Oh, good, yay! I never knew dirt smelled so good. Right? Look how you're getting your grounding in. You're getting all, you're getting your 15 minutes. You got all the business. I got all the business.